let's still stay on health. There's some good news because no COVID-19 deaths have been reported in the country in the last two weeks. According to statistics from the Ghana Health Service, the service's website indicates 783 as a figure for deaths since the beginning of May. It also shows the number of active cases of the pandemic has fallen to 1,197. Meanwhile, the second phase of the COVID-19 vaccination officially comes to an end today. The process was supposed to have ended on Wednesday, but was extended by two days for a mop-up. Joining us on Zoom for a conversation on the back of this is the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kuma Abwaje. Doc, thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon. Hello, Doc, can you hear me? Okay, it looks like, okay. There you are, Doc, but we can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, okay, so, so the second phase of the vaccination program um, has ended successfully. How would you rate it so far? Well, thank you very much. Um, yes, we rate it as um, successful. We started with a few challenges as usual. Um, data entry issues, network issues, and also we started with a new application, which our health workers were trying to build, uh, needed time to be able to get very used to. But subsequently, we've been able to cover so far about 376,000 uh, people have been vaccinated, find excess of the target we have set for Wednesday. And by the time we're even extending it, we had done about 98%, 98.5% of the people the target has been vaccinated. So, yes, one would say we've been successful. We wish we had more vaccines to cover more people, but I believe that time will come. Okay, so you say 376,000 people have been vaccinated. Was that for only for the yes. second phase, or is that the total number of people that were vaccinated? No, they were, we, based on the amount, the vaccines available, we have targeted that we do about 360 thousand for those who were vaccinated between the 1st of March and the 9th of March. Right. And so that's what we have done. But we've been able to uh, be some exceeded a bit to the number I'm talking about. Okay, so that's the second phase. So let's ra ra round it up, you know, and look at the, the, the bigger picture. What percentage of uh, Ghana's population uh, would you say at this point has been fully vaccinated? Will that be the 300 and I mean, that will obviously be the 376. But if you want to you know, report that percentage-wise, what would that be? Well, we are looking at people who are currently um, eligible for vaccination. And that will be between the 17 million to about 20 million. We have run it up to 20 million. And so in the very first single dose, we've given up to about um, 900,000 people. And those who have had a full vaccination will be about the 376,000 we are talking about. That definitely falls um, to less than 5% of the people who should be vaccinated. And that is not what we are looking for, but that is what we have based on the current situation. Our own effort are on to cover as many people as possible as vaccines become available. Speaking of, uh, of the availability of, of the vaccines, uh, I will go deeper into, into that. But then let me help us a bit more with the, some of the side effects that you 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 recorded uh when i went to take my job what they told me was that if you report if you felt any you know anything within your body you were to report back to but not everybody you know would come back and report to you what side effects they thought they had and so what did you record in terms of side effects and how do you to what extent do you think is representative i think as part of our communication we had actually uh, educated people about the possible side effects to expect. Obvious one, the part of the side of injection will be painful. Um, some will have temperature, some will have headaches, some will have body aches. But of course, in a rare event, that's why we don't even talk about side, we talk about adverse events. Okay. So that if anything happens to you after vaccination, we still want to know if it's something we are not aware of. But so far, we are reported mainly the um, common side effects of weakness, headaches, fever, side pain, um, injection side pain, and um, a few minor, minor uh, incidents like the earlier one where we have who actually had some 
reaction by uh, rea um, uh, restored, I mean, resuscitated and restored. I mean, those were very few. Okay, so we've not had any of the major ones like the clots or anything yet, but we've had more of the I think there have been other reports of possible adverse events of which we've had to do autopsy to check and confirm that it's unrelated to the vaccination. Okay, so let's talk about availability, which is something that you mentioned. Um, the ones that we got from Congo, uh, have we, you know, uh, issued all of those? Well, that was just 350,000, so obviously it's gone. It's gone. And... Uh, Oh, 350,000 doses, which we have currently done more than nearly 80,000. So obviously that is gone. We're just going a bit into the, some of the a few reserves that some of the regions had uh, in stock after the first uh, round. And so that one is finished. But we are still not giving up. We're still working very hard on the vaccine sharing approaches. Uh, unlike Ghana, there are many other African countries who have vaccines who are not able to deploy them. And so I'm sure Cobas and the Cobas is looking at how do we uh, make sure that we don't let any vaccine uh, by, um, expire. And if those things go around, we could also be beneficiaries of additional vaccines. But that is just one side. But the main issue is that the government is in charge with uh, private organizations, in charge with the company, the uh, vaccine uh, manufacturers, and even bilateral with other countries who may have vaccines to see how we can also not get, even not get for free, even including buying, so that we can actually get vaccines more uh, people. But I think the media should also help us by educating people about the challenge that globally everybody is facing, accessing vaccines. And so I believe that um, the effort made so far should be commendable in the fact that there are so many of our colleagues who have not even had a single dose of vaccine. And we continue to work to ensure that we have more vaccines. But in, in, in between that, we need to ensure that there are strategies that prevent any escalation of the, uh, the, back, the, the virus as we have it now. Speaking of, uh, you know, the challenges that we have, do we have clarity uh, on when the next consignment should be in? I mean, I know this is something that the service has been working on. In fact, we heard that President Kufado himself has stepped in, you know, helping with the processes. Where are we? Well, I think this is part of uh, advocacy negotiations and discussions. But you know for, for, for a fact that there's a virtually very little vaccine available. But then, so the very little, there's a lot of um, discussions, a lot of um, negotiations to make sure we can access any vaccines around the world. And I believe that's what we are doing. But I believe that we will succeed somehow because the, the effort being put up is quite robust. And uh, coupled with the fact that we are not a country that's likely to waste the vaccine that's given to us. That also gives us, puts us in a position that is uh, mm. helpful for us to be able to get some vaccines to, to work. But there are other arrangements in between to see other vaccines that are available. We are also having to try to ensure participating vaccine trials. Well, that's how other countries have been able to access vaccines. And so those are areas that we expect that when we get there, the media will also be our allies to ensure that by being participating in vaccine trials is safe but also as a way of uh, contributing to the global good of the world and also we really benefiting from uh, the vaccination. Mm. Speaking about uh, clinical trials, uh, the last time I spoke to uh, the uh, Director General of the Ghana Standards Authority, who himself is a vaccine expert, was talking about how Ghana seemed to have gained a certain reputation uh, about uh, being anti-receptive to clinical trials because people will complain and say we are being used as guinea pigs etc um uh, do people still feel attracted you know vaccine producers still feel attracted to coming to places like this from your engagement so far oh yeah there are, there have been a few uh requests and that is going to happen i'm sure we might participate in some soon but we must also educate people that phase three trial is not a stage where I mean it's gone through several stages. So, so there's some level of safety in that area. And also whatever they are doing, our own 
clear, I mean, conditions, our own nuances must be part of whatever decisions are made. And so that would mean that how do Ghanaians react to this vaccine? Do we react better or we don't react to it? All these are important information that we need to look at. And it also helps us to ensure that as we are participating, we are also more likely to be beneficiaries of these uh, vaccines if they become available. And you see many countries like Chile and others who have had a lot of vaccines, but they participated in, in clinical trials, these mm. are phase three trials. And I think it is something that the media, she also disabused people's mind about this issue of guinea pigs. It's not a guinea pig, it's, it's a world we have research and there are a lot of safety mechanisms that are put in place for all of us to contribute to ensure that as we get vaccine to give to our children and ourselves, mm. to try somewhere that we can also be part of the global community to participate in this important study that benefits everybody. And that's one of the things that India did. India, you know, became one of the places where some of these, uh, you know, clinical trials, you know, has taken place. So we have the, uh, the vaccine coming from there. But we have seen what is happening in India that is affecting the Serum Institute's ability to fulfill its commitment to the COVAX. Do we stand any more chances? Are conversations going on right now? Because what's happening in India is quite, it's really bad, to be honest. Well, I think the other aspect of what you're talking about is the fact that because um, India participated and India is producing vaccine, that's why they were able to lock up all the vaccine they're producing for their people. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so it is not the lack of vaccine or availability of vaccine that cause whatever is there, but at least when they had the outbreak, they had vaccine to, to, to fall back on. And so I think that's what we need to look at. But um, the last by the last statement that came out, the fact that they are going to ramp up production and that by October, they may start um, exporting vaccines. And so, uh, but I don't think Ghana is just waiting for just that stock alone, but we're also looking at other COVAX is still promise that maybe June, July, August, they might release some vaccines. And so we are all looking at all those things. So we'll keep up to that. But in between, mm. we must, as a matter of the most important is that we do not make the uh, virus escalate. And so our protocols and also new strategies, even the latest vaccine we have, that allows us to be able to contain the virus. Okay. Speaking about the other options available, we know that we were also talking, looking at Sputnik. Uh, we know that we've received some of them already. And I heard that we're also considering Johnson & Johnson. Um, can you take us through where we are with these other options? And the Sputnik uh, jobs that we received, uh, what happened to them? Well, they'll be, they'll be deployed very soon. As part of our rollout, they'll be deployed. But that was just a small uh, quantity that came in. And uh, we're hoping that the, the bigger quantity will be delivered and then we'll also move to the, the next stage. We, as part of the AU package, um, is where we also have some promise of Johnson & Johnson. Nobody very certain when the AU is going to, uh, as part of the African Medicines Platform, release their vaccine. But for us as a country, we are using all, of, um, um, taking advantage of all options to see how we can get vaccines. Uh, mm -hmm. to, and um, I can't give you dates. Okay. And um, But I believe that we should get some, and we're still standing by the fact that by the end of the year, we should be able to uh, meet the target that we set. I can understand, and I mean, Ghanaians will understand uh, your inability to give us dates. We can see what's happening uh, around the world and with this vaccine situation. But Sputnik, give us a bit uh, uh, of clarity. How many do we have and who are you targeting if, uh, for this deployment for the Sputnik vaccines? Well, I mean, that, those are discussions. I think we just have about... Um, uh, about 10,000 pairs that was uh, in and uh, we are we have to look at the our options in terms of our deployment plan and see which are part of it is we plugging we already have a deployment plan for the, the four phases and we are still doing the phases irrespective of the type of vaccine we have and so we're going to use the same deployment plan as we have to to deploy whatever the vaccine we have, whether it's AstraZeneca, whether it's Johnson Johnson, it's going to be the same deployment plan. And we are still in the phase one deployment plan. 
Okay. Well, uh, I, 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 I guess that with time, it will gain some more clarity on who exactly you want to, uh, you know, give the... Okay, the first one. The first one is people who are vulnerable. And we also have geographical, geographical hotspots in the country. And that is what we still uh, doing. Those, the first 900,000 who received their first dose are yet to get about half of them, about 500,000 of them are yet to get their second dose. So it's still within that uh, cohort that the current uh, phase still decide. And so that's what I'm trying to say, that the same plan. Whether it's based on the type of vaccine we have, that will go into um, that plan. Okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, go on to talk about the um, vaccination and the fact that now we know, I mean, at least about 370,000 people have been fully vaccinated. Does that mean that these people can stop wearing the mask, seeing as that is what communication we're getting from the CDC in the United States of America, for example? If not, how soon can you, you know, sort of relax on the wearing of masks? Okay, let me give you the condition under which we'll be able to stop wearing masks. Currently, there's no vaccine that gives you 100% uh, cover. I'm sure you have probably had your two doses as well. I have. But it gives you probably up to about 90% cover, which means that 10% of that you, are, you could get the virus. Okay. Your other additional protection is that you may not get sick because you are vaccinated. And that, that obviously you will probably not die from it. But that doesn't mean that you cannot, those who have received had it cannot transmit. But since about 90, over 90% 90 of the population are yet to be vaccinated, your risk is a risk to everybody. So that 10%, you can give it to somebody. If you, because you feel you are vaccinated, you are, you are protected, you stop wearing your mask and you transfer to somebody else. That becomes another way of learning. So that's why until uh, a significant number of population are vaccinated. And then we can look at the figures and that they are actually stable. You will still have to continue. Everybody has to continue wearing their mask. Okay. Let's talk about the testing regime at the airport. We know that people are still traveling in and, you know, the, the, the possibility that they're bringing in whatever it is from wherever they're coming from is also high. It looks as if with the vaccination, people seem to be relaxing their, uh, um, you know, relaxing uh, their guts, etc. You have recently gone there to the airport to check on the, uh, the um, testing regime there. Bring us up to speed on what has changed, if at all. Well, not much has changed. The same system that was established in terms of uh, arrival to have your um, your declaration, travel declaration done, you go and have your sample taken, you are tested, you go down, your test results are checked, your PCR negative results you should have had before and planning to Ghana is checked. If you are negative, you are given the necessary advice on how to protect yourself. If you are negative, if you are positive, you are now um, sent to an isolation center, either in a hotel or a treatment center, depending on your situation. If you are sick, you go to a treatment center. If you are not sick, you are put in an isolation center or in a hotel where you be observed for a number of days. There is a repeat test then you are discharged. Um, the system has improved, even better, more efficient, and the, well, the delays are seriously controlled. And those are the um, those who are kept in the I mean, the holding room when they are positive are refreshed, and they are quickly transported to where they are supposed to reside. So those, that's what is happening. So uh, the system is still there. And I think it still remains very good support. For the country as far as uh, reducing importation of the virus into the country is concerned. Uh, are and we as you have seen, when there is an outbreak outside the countries where they are coming to Ghana, you see the, the, the spike. When there's no outbreak out there, you see that the numbers also come down. Mm. And so it serves as a, a good safety net for us as a country. 
So, uh, and that's something that I was going to talk about next, which is our case count. But let's just look at uh, the countries that are allowed into Ghana, for example. Is India, are we still taking, uh, allowing visits or travels from India into Ghana? We have not banned any country from coming to Ghana. We have given a travel advice for our Ghanaians traveling to ensure that these are areas hotspot that you don't go to. But incidentally, the Indian government has virtually uh, stopped people from traveling outside. Most of the airlines that used to go there are probably not going there. So you are not probably get, you are not getting so many cases from there. But what we have is that we have some hotspots country that as and when we look at that, once they come in, we test negative because we have a double, a two-stage testing. A lot of those people are eliminated either even before they plane because you do a test and you are positive and so you can't travel. And when you get here, you are positive, you are detained. If you are negative, you are allowed to go in. But for those who come from, who are coming from hotspots, which may change today, maybe a different country tomorrow, then we'll do a follow-up on you. Ask all of you to, to self-isolate, even those who are negative from even countries where there's no risk. We are still advised to self-isolate if it's possible. And then for those who are coming from hospitals, some of them may be followed up to do an additional test on the third or fourth day to, to see their status. And we give them calls to monitor their, 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 their health to ensure that they are not changed and that we are able to quickly uh, isolate them if we need to. Because of the way the virus, uh, it can be negative today, but tomorrow it will be positive. And so we continue following them. Mm. There are discussions in Europe and other parts of the country, of the world uh, of a vaccine passport. Um, does it matter whether the people who are coming in Ghana are fully vaccinated or it doesn't matter? We'll still go through the same processes that you mentioned anyway. I, I think there's a lot of discussions on that. Some agree, some disagree. But I believe one day there'll be, the same if we have a yellow fever card, there'll be a card that we'll have to verify. And that is why our uh, vaccination card takes cognizance of the fact that it can be verified. And so that's why we have put a QR code at the back so that even before a specific vaccination card comes out, because of that, you can also, put, once they scan your, your, your QR code, they'll be able to see whether it takes them to a database to see whether you are fully vaccinated, the batch numbers you took, et cetera. And so, and that is why the preparation was done to ensure that should that come in, we have a database to feed into the world for any Ghanaian who is uh, vaccinated to be verified. Doc, let's wrap up with our case count at the moment. We're seeing some very good uh, results so far. Our cases have seen a significant drop. Let's uh, help us. Just go through with us if you have the figures available to you at the moment. And then uh, we can mm. talk about why we're seeing this. Yeah, but as you know, I think we've had, um, let me just, um, let's just brief you on where we are currently. Currently, we have an active case of 1,138, um, 784 deaths. Um, our severe cases still remain about 18, with critical who are six. Um, so in the last few weeks, we've been reporting relatively low figures. I think two days ago, we had 12 from Greater Accra. The latest one, we have 22 cases from Greater Accra and then a total count across the country of 52. And most of them are coming from um, Central Region reported 13 and Greater Accra 22. Then we have 10 from Eastern Region. Then these are all sporadic spikes that are currently ongoing. So the numbers are relatively good now, but doesn't mean that we should just relax. It means that we need to continue doing what we are doing and even do more. Wear a mask and do the social distancing and avoid crowding. Mm. So right. That's where, in summary, our figures really are. Across the remains the reach the, 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 the region with always reporting the highest number of cases. Are we still testing as much as we were when we started? Our testing policy remains the same is that anybody who shows signs and symptoms of that or anybody who is exposed to anybody who is positive is tested. So if I'm positive, all my contacts will be tested 
and those who come in with some signs and things will be tested. And so that is what the, the, the same policy regime that was given us 800 a day is the same policy we are applying today. And so if the numbers are low, we have to do fewer tests. If the numbers are more, two days ago we had 23 um, positives. Now if you have 22 and you have an average about seven or eight contacts per person, that will translate to a total number of tests that will be done. Wow. And we still continue testing people who are traveling out of the country. Anyway. Okay. Well, Doc, it's been uh, quite uh, uh, insightful and a number of minutes as well I've taken from you. Let's not take any more, but give us takeaways. What should those who have listened to this conversation take away from them uh, from here, apart from continuing to wear your mask and observe the protocols, even if you are fully vaccinated? Yes, to let people know that um, they should not be convinced, confused by anybody about uh, vaccine hesitancy. As we realize that when a lot of people in Accra are vaccinated, they can see the difference that's made. And so vaccine remains an important aspect of it. Apart from all that, let's avoid crowding. Let us continue abide, even though we don't want to talk about it, but that's the most important message, the fact that the, the protocol must be respected. And any time you have any symptoms or signs, please forget, don't forget to go around and have yourself checked. And then um, avoid craft, avoid crafting. And there are many things mm. that we've learned. And I think people are applying a lot of the, uh, the rules, sanitizer, hygiene is improving. And I think we should continue. And, and then we'll continue to ensure that we can stay, all stay safe. And then we're doing our best to make sure that more vaccines are brought in and more people are protected. Mm. And Ghanaians are looking forward to hearing more of some specific dates. I know it's hard for the entire world, but hopefully we get close to uh, to, to to those dates. Doc, I did say this would have, this would have been the end, but I just remembered something about uh, the countries you mentioned, that there are some African countries which seem to have um, vaccines that are not being used. Do we know who these, which these countries are and whether Ghana can take advantage? Since we have people who are ready uh, to take the vaccine, can we take advantage of that? Oh, well, I think these are a global issue. These are sub-regional issues. And so there's some uh, discussion to see what you can use, what you cannot use. It's the same, it's the same principle that allow the Congo vaccine to be moved to Ghana and other countries. That's what we are. That's all that's going on. I'm sure around us in the West Coast, there are countries that have vaccines. But I'm not sure whether it's the right thing for me to, to, to release that on this platform. But they know when there's a lot of... Uh, Equals on the beat trying to make discussion to ensure that because vaccines are not available in the world, no vaccine should be allowed to expire. And I believe that when things happen, just like where the DR will go, where they will come from, they will be pulled and then probably redistributed uh, for those who can use it to use. Doc, thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon. Yeah.